So your eBay items are getting no views right now at all. Your dead stop in views is what I'm hearing is going on from a ton of different people right this second. Hey, it's done. Today I wanted to address the view, zero view issue, which I'm hearing tons of people telling me about. The first thing everybody needs to be aware of is eBay changed like a year or more ago how views are added to your listings. In the past, the views used to be cumulative. So it would be over the entire length of your item being up on eBay. So if it was up for a year, you'd have a year's worth of views on it. Now it's only 30 days. Every 30 days, the views refresh themselves. Another big huge misconception on views is that if you don't get views, you're not going to sell anything. Well, I get a lot of sales without having views on the item because you don't need to view an item these days at all, especially from a cell phone, to even, even buy it. You can buy it straight from the screen without even clicking and viewing the item. The whole view aspect to us is completely and utterly unimportant and we don't even look at views unless I can send an offer to a watcher. Just like watchers, watchers mean nothing to me. I do not, nor have I looked at views or watchers and geez, I don't know how long, at least a year and a half. Views especially. I sell vintage niche items across the board in most of the places I sell it even on some of my other stores, even on another eBay store, we do still sell in niches. And in every niche I sell in, views mean nothing. One big, huge misconception that a lot of people get is that if I don't have a lot of views, I'm never going to sell the item. Most items we sell, I have a handful or less people, five people or less on the globe that may want those items. Some of the items I sell, there may only be one or two people anywhere that would ever want the items. So unless they see them, it's not going to sell anyway. So the view, in my opinion, and has been in my opinion for a very long time in these types of areas, means nothing. It means nothing at all. I don't even look. I don't waste my time. I don't think about views. I don't think about watchers. I don't look at watchers or views at all. It's a complete waste of my time. My sales are still there. So views, again, they don't mean anything. They mean nothing. Anybody can click on a link and, and wow, I viewed it, it means nothing. Even a watcher means very, very little, if anything at all. A lot of other people may have that same item to sell that you're selling, and they're watching it to see what it sells for. End of story. That's like probably half of a lot of the watchers that I see or people talk about are coming from stuff like that. And even if you, again, do have a bunch of watchers on an item, it means very little if they're not going to make an offer to you or you can't make an offer to them. Offers to watchers are great. I sell a lot of items sending out offers to watchers. So the more watchers that you can send offers to is great, but just having every one of your listings have 20 different watchers on it and nothing selling, even with the watchers, means nothing. Means nothing. Too many people worry so much about the views, worry so much about the watchers, and use that as a prime factor of what's going on in their business. Those are two terrible assumptions if you're selling in vintage collectibles and niches. Now, if you're selling um, a, a game, let's say a video game, that there's, you know, they make a million of them a year, watchers on those may be important because you've got a hundred other people selling the exact same thing as you at almost the exact same price point. They have it at the same price point, the same price as you do, or within a few dollars. And, and again, that means something. If you've got something that's really hot, it's been up for a while, and you got a ton of watchers, but nothing going on, again, with a hot item, that there's other people selling the very same item, that there's you know thousands of them available, the watcher count in that is different. You may need to look at the watchers to see. And if you've got a bunch of watchers and no offers coming in, but yet you see they're still selling, your price point may be wrong or something along that line. Your photos may be bad. And those are the only factors I would ever concern even looking at views and watchers. And I swear, I don't look at either one of those. I haven't in years. I've been stating this exact fact since pretty much the last five or six years I've been on YouTube because I, I really don't pay any attention to them. It means nothing to my business. I don't make more money if I've got 100 watchers on every item in my store. I don't make any more money if I've got 1,000 views on every single item in my store. It means nothing. It means nothing. 
So if you're not selling anything and you don't have any views, maybe it's the items you're selling yourselves. Maybe you've got flooded category items up. Maybe your keyword is bad. If you're selling cheap items like five and $10 items, old cassette tapes or baseball caps or stuff like that, or stuff that's just not in tip top condition, you're not going to be selling as many of those. If you're selling stuff that's winter wear and summer, you're not going to be selling much of that at all. And I know in the past it would be, you know, somewhere it's always winter. Well, with international shipping fees, international rules and regulations and stuff, the amount of people buying winter clothing from overseas is almost zip these days. At least from what I've heard and talked to it, dozens and dozens of people who have done that in the past. So what was good and working great two or three years ago for some people isn't working now. The situation is totally different. You've got to be able to pivot. You've got to be able to read the market. You've got to be able to understand what's going on to keep your stuff going. That's the best gist I can tell you. Our sales literally are right now running five digits a month without any problems right this minute. It's still very close to you know the beginnings of fourth quarter numbers for us. I'm selling niches. I'm selling unique items. Again, items that may only have two or three people interested in them. But again, my price point, my keywords, my volume is what's driving me. Now, you don't have to have a big store to be able to do good business. You just have to be able to list good items continuously at least five days a week and a decent amount. Increase your inventory at least five, ten percent if you can a month. So if you've got a thousand items up, at least add another hundred every single month. Again, if you can afford it, if, if it's feasible, if you're still making revenue, if you're making nothing, Listing a bunch of items may not help you because you may not have good enough items to even, you know, bring in the sales to begin with. You know, I don't share my, my listings with folks. I don't post my store all over the place and I still get the sales. I go strictly off the keywords, strictly off my photos and strictly off the type of items I sell to garner sales. I don't market myself across the internet to like platforms like YouTube, because most of my business wouldn't come from places like that. So I'm not wasting money, I'm not wasting time on advertising to a market that's not there in these areas for my specific items. I know that the best place to buy the items that I'm selling, I'm listing those items on that platform. It may not always be eBay either. eBay is not the best place to sell some items. It's surely not the best place to price, to figure out a price on your items as well. A lot of people actually you know, don't understand the whole pricing of their items. They may be new, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the learning curve when you start doing anything. And for us, that's the exact same, same principle. I didn't know a ton of what I know now when I first started doing this, but I've learned throughout the years. I've also done a ton of tests and I run tests all the time on tons of listings, tons of different things to try and do. I even tried promoted listings, sadly, uh, a year or so ago, and I did it for almost a month and I had terrible results. So. I know that doesn't work for me because I'm selling niche items. Again, it comes down to the fact that there may only be five people or less that want anything that I'm selling. They're not high in demand items that I sell, but they're good items. And they're items that you know will have buyers for them at some point once someone sees them. But me paying to advertise or promote or any of that type of thing isn't going to help if there's not enough people in the first place who are even interested in it. I've had several people reach out to me, including somebody I know fairly well, that stopped doing promoted listings because their sales dropped off. And they said, there's no way I can promote if I'm not selling anything anyway, and I'm, then I'm just giving eBay more money. Well, once they stopped promoted listings, they actually started selling a few more items. Now, I'm not saying that it's because of dropping promoted listings. There's no way to technically tell that, but I've had other people tell me that. You know, I don't have the proof on it, but the person that I know who told me that, I've seen. I've seen the results. Again, I can't say that's, that's how it worked for you or anybody else. I just know for the, the five or six people that I've personally talked to, including one that's a decent, decent friend of ours, that for, for these folks, dropping promoted listings when they were slow actually helped them. I don't do promoted listings. Again, I tried it once uh, not too long ago, and I used to do them like three and a half, four years ago, but I don't do them anymore at all, and I'll never try even running a test on promoted listings at all. It's a money grab and nothing more in my opinion. My items would sell whether I promoted them or not. I didn't get any more sales. I got less sales when I promoted. And I did a pretty decent chunk of change, I think eight or 10% promotion. So it wasn't like some cheapo promotion that I did hoping you know, to, to pump it out. I know a lot of people say just do one or 2%. 
I did higher than that because I wanted to see for sure, and I, I, I ran a test. I ran 8,000 listings promoted and, and a bunch, two more, three more sets of listings, uh, roughly what, 24,000 more listings. So I have a baseline to test and compare like-to-like -like items and, and the results are terrible. So, you know, I know my items. I know what I sell. I know their history. I know their sales history for the last 15 or 20 years. I've read into them. There's, there's um, journals, there's um, magazines that are related to the stuff I sell. There's collector societies and on and on and on. I know the items. I know what's going to draw. I know the, the, the better ones. I don't list cheaper items either. I don't list anything that's cheaper under 15 bucks as a general uh, scheme of things. If I'm not gonna get 15 bucks, I usually don't list it. Five and $10 items are not going to do anything other than waste a lot of my time. If it's a five or $10 item, chances are a ton of people have those same items. And cheapness, if you add in shipping, so if it's a $5 item, it costs $5 to ship, it's a $10 item now. If you're selling it for $5 or even 10 and you're including free shipping on something, you're only making a dollar or two. And if you can only pack up 10 items in an hour, you're making 10 bucks an hour, maybe 20 bucks if you're lucky. And that's just a joke in this industry. We make well, 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 well over that. I make it at the hundreds an hour with my work time based on you know what we're getting back in from what we put into it. And I've, I've spent my time figuring everything out. When I first started doing this, I spent a ton of time, I, I, I thought it was a waste back in those days. And most people, when I tell them you gotta do this, you gotta do that, they say, well, that's just a lot of time. I don't have the time to do it. I'm just gonna be wasting my time. If you wanna do this for the rest of your life, you're gonna have to invest that time. Anything that, that's worth doing is gonna take time invested into it. And if I didn't spend you know, hours of my day 20 plus years ago digging into this stuff and figuring out what's what, figuring out the markings, figuring out the best items to sell, figuring out where to find the items, the best items, and figuring out which ones I should list singly versus lots, which ones I can price 3X versus which ones I can price 2X versus which ones I can't price up at all. You know, that's where, where it all paid off these days. I, you know, I don't even need my phone most of the time when I'm going out to look stuff up because I know most of the items that I sell because I've been doing it for decades. If you're new, again, you're gonna have to invest some time into it while you can to figure all this stuff out. There is no one model covers everybody. That doesn't exist. I don't care what any other YouTuber, reseller, or anybody says, there is no one model fits all. Everybody has a different sourcing uh, ability as well as different sources. So there's tons of things that I can find here that you won't be able to find in your area and vice versa. There's people that show me phenomenal um, items that I, I just never see in their area, but you know, they find them and they make a business off of it. So there's no way to have a model that fits everybody. There's no one size, one model fits all. You're just gonna have to know your items. You're gonna have to test a lot of stuff. You're gonna have to see what works and what doesn't work. You, the days of just picking some random items off a shelf and throwing them up on eBay and selling them immediately, making a living doing that without having to look up, without having to know anything are pretty much gone. Again, I'm still well above the mark here. We're doing better this time, right this very second than I have for the last probably four or five summers, Junes, right now. And we don't usually do the numbers, the volume I'm doing right now in summer. Again, we've changed our structure, we've moved things around, I've been a little more careful. I've tested the waters on running sales and markdown as well as end and sell similar. Again, if you're in my Patreon group or YouTube membership, I got a video from last week going on about that, how we're doing it, what's going on, and what's working for us. I can promise you my sales are still there because I am working my store, I'm doing everything that I can. My store is my life, my business, not just eBay store, but my Amazon, Etsy, everything else takes precedence in, in business structure for, for this. We're working it, we're doing our thing, we're listing at least five days a week. I'm shipping immediately, I'm responding to emails immediately, I'm sending offers to watchers at least 10 or 15 times a day, every single day of the week, even on our days off, and it's constant, it constantly flows. Again, it, it depends on what you're selling. If you're selling items that are rare, unique, or even just plain niches, there may only be a handful of them on eBay to begin with, and only a handful of people that want them. The best keywords will rule the day, the best feedback will rule the day. You know, so just keep those thoughts in mind. 
Now again, to sum this up, views and watchers to me mean absolutely nothing. I do not pay any attention to them. The only watchers that mean anything are the ones that I can send offers to watchers to. If I can't send nothing to them, it means nothing. View counts, watchers are a waste of my time to even look at. Because my sales are there, my items are decent, we're following the procedures, I'm doing the markdowns, I'm doing the sales, I'm sending offers to watchers. That's all I really need to get my business straight and to keep it going in the same direction it's going in right now. This is my lifelong goal to continue this for the rest of my life. So I've studied and I've invested a ton of time into figuring out what works, what doesn't work, pricing structures, all that kind of stuff, including my keywords. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. When entering the world of art, you'd be smart to dress the part. Gentlemen prefer hands. With all the ladies draped in crepe, the artist loves the human shape. Gentlemen prefer hands. Hands will make you smooth and silky, shapely, sexy. Wear a pair and you could be captured for posterity. Gentlemen prefer hands.